Uh, welcome to another episode of Coffee Saints. So, um, I've got um, Barry Moore here today uh, on, a, on a tangent here with a crypto story. Uh, I think it's really fascinating now, especially with the focus on uh, where crypto is going and, and obviously the resurgence of Bitcoin. Um, Barry, look, uh, it, the company is called um, Scarlet and it's actually Perth born. So Barry's been working on this project for a while and um, they're looking to um, go to market very soon. I believe the app is online. Um, but Barry, just, just give us an intro about yourself and, and yeah, share the story. Yeah, cheers, thank you, Noel. So yeah, I guess where we started about close to two and a half years ago and within that space, there was about six months of, first six months of really trying to work out where we were in the head, in, in which direction, within the crypto space. Uh, we started to develop that a website and as part of that website, basing it on an ICO through real estate and uh, creating smart contracts and ledgers for real estate, for the real estate industry. Mm. Um, I guess for a lot of years, um, the term ICO actually stands for an uh, initial coin offer as opposed to uh, an IPO, which is um, your traditional listing on stock exchange. Correct. Um, yeah, look, I mean, I was involved in, in a few ICOs going back you know, three years now, mm. and obviously that was all the rage, and, and, and there's always this, but I think um, the industry's changed a, a fair bit you now in terms of um, where things are, how are people being used and how often they're used. Yeah, I believe I believe this this is the future in the sense that countries are looking to digitise their economies and uh, as we become completely automated, completely digitised, uh, having a focus on an industry such as real estate or such as the mining sector, having that on the blockchain, having the smart edges, uh, being able to pay with the cryptocurrency or with the digital money is definitely way, the way where the world is heading. So it, it's the right time to be, to be involved. And uh, even though there was probably quite a few, probably not the greatest ICOs back as you were suggesting three years ago, mm -hmm. I agree that I think that th things have changed and um, it, it's definitely heading towards the way of the future, how we interact with money and how we interact with goods and services using money. Just, just for viewers' sake, um, I think, I mean, even for myself, I find that I was very surprised at how people walking around with sort of debit cards or credit cards or whatever you want to call them, mm. that you tap and you're actually buying things with your cryptos. Yes, yes and, that's and correct. that's suddenly appeared, to me anyway, um, that it's, it's, it's in the market and people are using it a lot. Whereas going back to three years ago, I don't think that was really the norm. No, no, it was all very small in, in any event. That, I believe that, that was just taking off then. That was just under, under a lot of the company's development. And um, it was, there were certainly a lot of challenges around that space for it, where, where the company was based and then sending those cards internationally and where the banking system would allow those, those cards to be used. Mm. Um, there, there's still many challenges. We're, we're lucky enough to... Um, be in some in some client meetings and negotiations at the moment with some tier one banks to facilitate for that for us, and that that will all come out in the next sort of month or so as as we move along with those um, discussions to to see where we're at with them. Can you tell us like what is Scarlet um, effectively in a, as layman's term as possible? Because, but basically on top of um, how initially we were talking about the website and the real estate and the ICO, where we've gone from there is we've bought, built a, a wallet and an exchange. Uh, the wallet and the exchange is live on the website and it's also now available on Google Play on Android. And we should be live on iOS by, by or before Christmas. Um, once we're live on the iPhone, then we'll look at putting some more pairs on there uh, we, we have about, uh, it's 11 or 12 off the top of my head, different cryptos at the moment. And so we'll continue to add the, the different cryptos and new cryptos as they, you know, they were coming up every other week, a new crypto. So we'll continually add 
Uh, where we've built our, our app is it's already ready for the consumer. So the consumer is able to go into a shop or at the moment, especially peer to peer. We're looking at by early January building the app for the merchant. So in this sense, you can go with your mobile phone, QR code, and for example, scan with your coffee in your local coffee shop as they've downloaded the merchant software. Uh, very easy, very simple to use. We, we built this in, my, in the mind. I was thinking of my 74 year old father who can barely turn a computer on. So how can we, how can we engage the general population to understand and use crypto? So even though the, obviously the back end of what we can do, it's quite um, challenging, I guess is the word, or, or quite, could be quite confusing for, for many people. The way we build the app is for the layman person you can open up, they can load up the digital currency or load up their crypto very simply and very simply uh, pay with the app at the moment or in the future once we partner up with the bank, uh, MasterCard or Visa, be able to tap with the MasterCard or Visa. In trying to understand what the app does, is it correct to say your app is the exchange? So you've got cryptos which are numerous cryptos we know that there's, yes. there's hundreds, thousands, of thousands, yeah, right? thousands yeah. and then you're in exchange yes correct and these guys take crypto well let's say let's say for myself i have five cryptos ranging from bitcoin to some obscured ones yes and 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 these are if if they're on your exchange i can then use your app to transact correct that's and correct. transact being i can use it then to go buy a coffee or or something um, with a card that is a third party card that allows them to talk to your exchange correct and allow the transfer from crypto to uh, fiat money correct that's correct yeah. yes. so so s and, and the business obviously from your point of view is you want to load this up with credible uh, cryptos correct that yes. allows consumers like myself to be able to transact through exchange. That's correct. And the exchange then makes sort of money from that, obviously. That's right, yeah. Yeah. So that journey, from, from start to end, I mean, that's um, from, from those people who are technically sort of uh, on the low side. Can you just tell us what that journey is and what, where the, the issues could come from, from, from outside? Uh, I, I guess the initially, uh, we, we were developing for about 12 months and um, how with new tech coming out and different ideas coming out we basically rubbed off the whiteboard and have started from scratch so you know, this is the problem I guess in, in the, with the tech and how you can use the tech the usability as, as those ideas grow and as it becomes quick well I guess through COVID it's become more more advanced in terms of usability that mm. as countries now are now talking about turning digital to digital currency. Um, luckily enough we were ahead of the game back in January and decided back then that we actually needed to update to to be ready for this. So we began um, redevelopment back in January to, to literally be ready for countries becoming digital. So it was a bit of a coincidence then COVID happening in, in that February, March, or the impact that we didn't know was about to occur. Um, we should be at the point by sometime early January, February of starting to build our own blockchain. Uh, I won't go too much into how we're going to do it, but basically, um, in layman's terms, but we're going to we're going to allow for our blockchain with the interconnectivity, so that. For example, Cambodia, they're building their own blockchain for their digital community, digital economy. And no one has really thought of too much of how these blockchains are going to communicate. So we're sort of at the, at the development stage now where we're going to enable and allow multiple blockchains to communicate through us as the, as the node. Okay. Mm. Okay. 
bit more complex and yeah, yeah, yeah. don't want to go yeah, too yeah. into depth. Yeah, you'll lose half of us anyway. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but in terms of obviously the, 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 the million dollar question for everybody and, and, and I think this was the big issue with crypto is when the Fed started is, mm. is security, right? I mean, okay, we, we get that, that you've got an exchange and I've got five cryptos and uh, you've listed them there. How do we, from a consumer point of view, feel secure that this is not going to be hacked or whatever? Uh, I, I guess with the multiple issues there's been in the past uh, with, the, with these hackings, I'm not sure so much that um, the companies behind them didn't have the experience or they were maybe very sort of third tier in, in the sense of their, um, their product that they'd built and delivered. That they, they weren't really caring about the consumer, they were after the quick dollar. They wanted to make their money on the ICO. Two years later they were packed up whether they were hacked or not. Mm. And unfortunately that was, uh, you know, that was a big problem with ICOs. Uh, it's it's basically impossible. It's not. It is impossible to hack the blockchain itself. Um, in terms of wallets and then security around that, I guess it's just like your everyday bank, right? Mm -hmm. You've got your app. You've got your Westpac, your ANZ, or whatever. Mm -hmm. If you choose to share your QR codes online or your passwords online, and you choose to not put in appropriate addresses with the HTTPS. Um, then, then you are open, open to being hacked to lose your funds. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure, though, uh, as the as the industry sort of grows, that there'll be insurance companies, sort of like the bank, where you'll be protected. Mm. Uh, I'm sure that the, there's there's other smart companies that are now looking at how can we protect users. Um, from these attacks mm -hmm. because of course it's not always the user's fault sometimes it's a credible attack mm -hmm. on your wallet and there's nothing much that you can do just no different than when uh, for example I lost $800 to I was actually physically in Beijing and they hacked my Westpac in Beijing and that was that $800 was gone what could I do yeah. they called the bank and, and they replaced the money so I'm sure that as we advance within that crypto space, that there'll be other companies that will step up to to ensure against such attacks. Obviously, in the last uh, few weeks, you know, with, the, with the onset of Bitcoin going to uh, or PayPal accepting Bitcoin and things like that, um, how has that impacted on your journey, like going forward with the people you talk to? Oh, look, uh, I, I guess in a way, the, the, in, in the overall scheme of things, the, as we stated before, there's maybe a thousand odd plus cryptos. Um, the, there's maybe 50 odd blockchains or 100 odd blockchains, maybe roughly. Um, you know, how many cafes are there just in, for example, in Perth? There, there must be over 20,000 cafes. Uh, for a very small population of 1.8 million. Uh, I think that it, we're, crypto is so new, only 10 years, and we're probably still between five to 10 years away from it really becoming mainstream, um, where every, every ounce or every inch of our society has incorporated the digital currency or crypto in some way in the block exchange, for, for example, procurement or um, with such things, you know, as companies update their IT systems to to handle that, the, the blockchain and handle those ledgers. The, the, no matter what, this will be the future. And uh, I think just for the fact that we're in there within that space, any any competition, self competition. Mm. Oh, I'm happy that PayPal's out there and doing it mm. because suddenly we can say, well, you know, we're, we're there next to PayPal. We've already got finished product. Mm. PayPal's still developing. They're meant to be a billion dollar tech company. We're only a, a small Perth conglomerate mm. and uh, yet we, we sort of beat them in this space. Mm. Mm. I think in some ways it's, it's good. Um, it's given sort of credibility yes. to, the, to the whole scene. Whereas, you yes. know, I, 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 we've had, when I was involved in the ICOs, everyone was just, oh, this is sort of a, a fairy tale thing. It's yeah. all a scam. And, 
Th those kind of comments was yeah. synonymous with ICOs, cryptos. Yeah. Uh, and then when when the crypto world sort of took a dive, and then sort of said, well, okay, so there you go. It, you know? yes. yeah. Now it's come back with resurgence, and I think, uh, it, it, I guess it's like everything new, right? It, it, it takes that time for people to suddenly realise that this is not as uh, scammy as or and it's more credible than than you first thought. Right? That's right. Yeah. Because um, there, there are there are a couple of ladies in Fremantle. I forget the name of the um, the business. They they they've been sort of talking to retailers to implement the merchant software that you talk about, yes. so that people then can purchase items from cafes and things like that. Yes. So that was happening probably. Um, a year and a half ago that I, I met I met with them yes and I think that that was really sort of ongoing yes um, and now I'm seeing people walking around with these cards and they say oh I just go to any card like, like, like your Westpac card or CBA card yes either. so where is obviously I've missed something where, where they've gone from uh, it's very very niche to suddenly very um, day to day I, I think that's just the way the tech world is. It, it evolves so quickly. Um, people talk. People want to be involved in the latest things. You know, it's like when the latest TV comes out, everyone wants it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, I think that with the, the re-rise of Bitcoin, that's sort of that's what sparked this. That people are now jumping sort of back on the bandwagon. Mm. Then with countries, you know, such as the European Union has just announced. Uh, they would like to digitise and they're, they're asking for feedback. Russia is uh, looking at digitising. Cambodia is digitising as we speak and will most likely be one of the first countries in the world. Uh, places like Burma and Vietnam are now looking into it. Uh, as the world digitises, uh, it, it really is unstoppable. And if you can come up with so with our RCO, we, we believe that we've got a very good product behind it because we're in the building industry in Perth, which is an extremely stable uh, place to build, an extremely play, stable place uh, to complete the, the projects, complete building, and there's always excellent returns mm. on, the, on the buildings in Perth. So then with the, the investors getting a return on the rent roll and a return mm. on the profits from the development, it, the, these types of, uh, I guess, um, it, it's really quite innovative in this mm -hmm. t in this sense mm -hmm. that these ICOs can really make a lot of money, not just for the for the company itself, but for the investors and for the local community uh, as the company builds and doing, I guess, everything eco-friendly, digital friendly. Um, you know, there's no more digging money out of the ground and. Chopping down trees to to make mm. paper notes, I guess, in, in some countries. So, you know, the, you're talking a whole lot of environmental context that that I guess look, the ladies down in Fremantle they would have thoroughly enjoyed the fact that now they're no longer you know Fremantle's a bit more green. Mm. That they, they they enjoy the fact that everything's becoming digital and that's a lot less mining mm. that that we're impacting on the planet to, to create money. I mean, on top of that, money's extremely dirty. Mm. Obviously now COVID, I guess, that's out there more a bit of a discussion, but it's always been very dirty. Uh, you know, you don't know what people have been doing with that $10 note before the shop assistant's given it back to you. Mm. Mm. It's changed, yeah. Well, I mean, you see that around now where they have big, big sign saying, you know, take yeah. cash because of that. Whereas, you know, um, 20 years ago, it was the opposite. We don't take credit, we only take cash. Yes, that's right. And, um, but going back to your digitising the national money and things, I think there's also talk about um, China digitising, creating digital currency. Yes. Which I think, you know, I, I'm actually quite bullish on the market and, and I think, you know, it, it's, it's, it's an industry that's, um, uh, I, I guess it's, it's almost um, growing at a rapid, such a rapid rate that, it's hard to catch on, and you're going to miss bits and pieces. And, and it's 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 a new concept in a sense. Yes. Um, and also, I think where, where you guys are coming from, as I understand it, it's you're an exchange, right? Yes. So effectively, you you are just effectively trying to allow people to um, trade their crypto. 
yes. or use use to create. Trade, trade and use. That's yes. correct. Yes. And, and as a business, that's that's where you earn your dough, I guess. That's right. Yeah. So, so we'll take a raise up. Um, yeah. It'll be under zero 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 one of a cent, I guess, of the transaction. Uh, but much cheaper than I guess Visa or Mastercard mm. or such that someone would use now. Mm. Um, there's obviously also the speed and uh, free transactions, peer to peer, instant mm. transactions, instant international transactions. Mm. I mean, I, I just recently had to transfer some money to, to family and things. Then I went the traditional way using your, your bank platform and things like that. Yes. And then our son is introduced to transfer wise. Yes. And I was so surprised at how fast it and how easy it was. And it was significantly cheaper in fees, right? Yes. So going for people, I, I, I think it, it's, it's the management fee that leads, that you're going to see. Suddenly you save so much. Yes. And then you look at your, your exchange rate where, where the transfer is lower or higher than so CBA or something like that. Yeah. It almost becomes irrelevant unless you're transferring like big sums, right? That's right. You're transferring a couple hundred bucks. It saves it? money. It, it, it's actually the transfer fee that hurts you more than the exchange rate. Right? Yes, yes. So I think in, in going forward, things like this, I can see where people can get that value in the sense that you're, like you said, you know, I'm going to transfer some money to you or buy something overseas. And the average Joe is not doing fifty thousand dollars. The average Joe is doing hundred dollars to two hundred dollars. You can see the savings. Yes, that's great. Yes, for sure. And it's especially uh, I know that there's some cigar merchants, for example, in America. They've now started taking Bitcoin uh, from the international customers, and purely it's an instant transaction for them. Mm. And, and cheaper transaction for them. Mm. So they're receiving the Bitcoin, the customers are actually receiving their goods in an expedited process mm. because the cigar merchants receive their, their money instantly and it's a very seamless process. Mm. So the, in this sense, as, as we move forward, the usability of not just Bitcoin but multiple, multiple cryptocurrencies um, and, and for those out there that are wishing to start their own, you know, I, I really, really Im implore them to, to go out and do it and have a crack. Uh, I'd love to see our, our state government e embracing blockchain, embracing digital currency, and um, especially in this time, there, there's the, so much scope and opportunity to creating tech hubs. Um, and as the way forward, I mean, for, for example, we were out with, with some friends last night in Leaderville and we, we had to pull into the car park and pay for the ticket. Some lady's money got jammed in there and whatnot. That was all a big fuss. So we eventually went back to the uh, went back to the car and put our ticket up and we went into the little cafe there in Leaderville and had a coffee. And I, I was saying with, with the group there that, that I've been gone to me, I said it's funny because over in Estonia, which is a very third, well not quite third world, but a very small economic uh, country and coming out of the ex-Soviet Union, yet everything there is on blockchain. So there, you, you drive into a car park there, you're on the blockchain, they're scanning your number plate, that's going automatically through to your phone and you, you leave it, you're leaving the car park and you're paying for that ticket digitally through mm -hmm. straight through your phone, mm -hmm. all through the blockchain. And the, you know these small countries, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, they're they're so far advanced uh, in their thinking. Yet here in Australia and, and obviously in over in America, a lot of our, our Western countries, we've got a long way to grow. So uh, you know, I really believe that there's space that multiple companies can be getting behind this. There's, there's room for collaboration, there's room to work together mm. and there's a space where we can uh, develop this industry that's for the benefit of everyone actually. Yeah. So going forward as a business, I mean, are you guys um, looking, what, what's your path forward in terms of business wise? I, I guess as we speak, we're, we're live for our ICO as of today, that's now gone live. Mm -hmm. uh, people will be able to download the, the app and start buying the Scarlet Token. Um, we, we've already pre-arranged a partnership with a large hotel group 
and a large builder here in Perth to um, buy some land, uh, build, the, build the hotel for the hotel group, uh, international hotel group, and we're in pre preliminary discussions with them, so shall the ICO work out on a 15 plus 15 year lease uh, with a substantial rent return uh, back to us. So, uh, and then we're looking at some other developments with some key builders. And then I guess moving forward, we'll, we'll just continue to develop our technology. We'll continue to develop our products with with the, developing our own blockchain, as I, as I stated earlier, and um, continually adding pairs to our exchange so there's, there's more offerings for, for people to purchase there's some of those more obscure cryptos that are out there and yeah I, I guess in the end we, we just we're really excited actually we're really excited that where we're going and it's probably I, I know even my own family has sometimes the trouble grasping the ideas or the, the concept that we've come up with but I guess as we as we keep moving forward, maybe over the next six months, it, it's going to be very mainstream, and it's very exciting to be in this space at a very early stage. For for the, the, the viewers out there who's, who's sort of caught on to the concept and they like the idea, and and they would like to sort of get in the action, I suppose, in the better words to use. What what could they do? I mean, could they invest in, in, in what you're doing or? Or they, do they just take up the coins and look at the exchange? And yeah, they, they take up the coin, they take up the ICO, the, the Scarlet token. Uh, that's that's the simplest way to do it. Um, but it's all going to be about usability. So with all the all these cryptos out there, that's that's what it's about. So gathering the users, we, we've um, we've had some quite good traction in the past few weeks and. We're slowly building on social media. We're slowly getting it out there. Uh, we, we've had some very, very uh, productive meetings with some key investors that are looking to invest. Um, so yeah, we're very excited, and, and we really believe that our ICO is going to work, and the product will work, and that everyone will be happy in the end. And also the overall product that we're building will be able to be implemented in the general mainstream society, uh, which is also an exciting sort of space to be in in such its infancy. Mm. Oh, fantastic, Barry. I mean, look, it's, it's a sort of a, a, a concept that's, I think, it's easy to think about, hard to really grab on and, and, and have a good feel. Yeah. But I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's it definitely is the new world to come, uh, without a doubt. Um, with digital currency, and I don't think it's an ICO new concept thing. I think a lot of nations, if you look at uh, news releases, are actually coming into this kind of world yes. um, more so than not, right? Yes. So, um, look, Barry, thank you for sharing. I uh, really appreciate you giving time to having a chat. Uh, I'd love to continue to follow your story, and hopefully, we can get an update on how things are. Um, and just give you know, the views for viewers, you know, continue to feel free to, to send me some uh, comments and, and, and questions and I'll pass them on to Barry. Um, Barry, I'm sure, will be happy to, to help you out in, in better understanding of the concept. Yeah, more than happy. Um, in the meantime, continue to hit that, that like button and subscribe to us. Uh, it helps us get the story out a bit more. Uh, again, thank you, Barry. Okay, and um, you. Let's, let's see if we can continue the story. Okay. All right. Yeah.